Welcome all of you. My name is David Pollock. I'm chairman of Durian's Monuments and Ceremonies Commission. On behalf of the town of Durian, I welcome you to Durian's Memorial Day Ceremonies here at Spring Grove Veterans Cemetery, the first veterans cemetery in the state of Connecticut. Thank you for coming. Please look around you at the flags on all of the gravestones. As I thank the Boy Scouts of Troop 35 and 53 and their leaders who came out here on Thursday night and placed 2,184 flags on these monuments and also another eight or 900 on those in the private sector, on those veterans in the private sector. This year marks the 100th anniversary of the armistice, which ended the fighting in World War I. And this ceremony is dedicated to the service members who lost their lives in that conflict. Let us also remember all who gave their lives for our country in all conflicts throughout our history. I'm going to open with the prayer of invocation, and that's going to be delivered by Reverend Monsignor Edward R. Cirillo, proud member of the class of 1955 of Darien High School. Almighty God, God of our fathers and our mothers, God of the fathers of this great country of ours, how privileged and how humble we are to be here on this sacred ground, this holy ground, this hallowed ground that holds in the warmth of its embrace the bodies of heroes, the bodies of people who have followed the instruction that no greater love has anyone than to give his life for another, to love one's neighbor as oneself. We come here today affirming that wonderful rule of life, love, love that is selfless. We think of those who are buried here in this wonderful place, this place of history, this place which is really just a stone's throw and within earshot of a road that the father of our nation traveled many, many years ago, that one who was first in the hearts of his countrymen. We thank you for the, the lives of those who are buried here. We ask you to be kind to them through their souls for the goodness of their lives. We realize and they know that though their souls be in heaven with you, their bodies await the resurrection to hear the trumpet, the bugle, not of morning, reverie, and dawn, not of taps and dusk, but the great trumpet that calls them to the resurrection of life, to share in the glory of that one who was born in the lilies far long ago, in a far off land, in whose breast was the glory to be shared with all of us. Who believe. We thank you for all what they have done for us who now enjoy this great land under God, the God in whom we say we trust, the God from whom our rights come, those rights and liberties that our fathers enumerated come directly from you, Almighty God, our Father and not from the state, not from the government, not from any human being, but from you, innate. We are born with the right to live, to be free, and to pursue happiness. Thank you for those who have fought to keep this freedom and keep this vision alive. Our flag flies still in glory as we come together in thanksgiving and in gratefulness for all that is done for us. May we hold these things dearly in our hearts. May, we, may you send your spirit upon us that we may be a country united with single purpose and with single principles and goals. And we always ask these things through the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Reverend Monsignor. I'd like to introduce a few officials here who are present before we say the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by our Grand Marshal, Robert S. Mitchell, U.S. Navy. First of all, we have Grand Marshal Robert Mitchell, U.S. Navy. We have our speaker, Gold Star Mother, Patricia Parry, and her husband, Dr. Michael Parry. We have State Representative Terry Wood. We have Durian Selectman, First Selectman Jamie Stevenson, Susan Marks, Pam Sparkman, Mark Thorne, and Charles Coons. We have our Police Chief, Ray Osborne. Representatives of the Neroten Heights Fire Department, Ron Riolo, Chief of the Neroten Fire Department, John Hesmer. And some members of the Monuments and Ceremonies Commission, without which we would not have these programs or the parade. Sharon Bixler and Vietnam veteran Alan Bixler, Terry Gaffney, Vietnam veteran Roland Hollow, Karen Pollitt, Rebecca Siciliano, Kenneth Reese, World War II veteran Charles Scribner, Navy Reserve Officer Sue Ann Shore. These are our commission members that serve your town. Special thanks to Sarah Zagrotsky for all the work that she did to help us out this year. Please stand and uncover if necessary with a pledge of allegiance led by Grand Marshal Robert S. Mitchell. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Scout June Chin, Troop 50265, Schwartz back in the day, and uh, we were one of the few cemeteries that were able to, uh, to achieve having one of these plaques placed in it by the Veterans Administration in Connecticut, so we're very proud of that. We also have behind me a small locust tree that is a seedling from a, a witness tree that was at Gettysburg, which was also delivered at the same time they gave us that plaque. So without any further ado, Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, get a scalp to Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the preposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war testing whether that nation, or any nation,
so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it, far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note, nor long remember, what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly dedicated here to the un far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to the cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Thank you very much, June. That was extremely well done. We are next going to have our Memorial Day poetry winner, Patrick Finnegan of Middlesex Middle School, read his poem. We do this essay, we do an essay contest and a poetry contest every year. We try to get it spread around between the high school and the middle school. And the middle school this year really came through with some outstanding works. This work was the best of them all. And, uh, we think you'll enjoy it. So Patrick Finnegan, please come up and read your poem. Sacrifice. They gave up everything, gave their lives to protect freedom, to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. People forget what it means to be American. They didn't. What if they gave up, like many people do today? What would have happened to America, to the world? But they didn't forget. People take the freedom in America for granted. They forget tens of thousands of men and women gave their lives to uphold this freedom. <coughs> Memorial Day is about remembering. Remembering the men and women who gave the ultimate sacrifice to protect the world from tyranny. I remember. You. you see there's hope you have young children like this young students who understand it they get it and they write material like this just outstanding we're now going to have General Logan's Order Number 11, the Grand Army of the Republic. This will be read by Ian Holly from Boy Scout Troop 35. Ian. On May 5th, 1868, General John A. Logan, Commander in Chief of the Grand Army of the Republic, issued General Order Number 11, which stated, the 30th day of May, 1868 is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in the defense of our country. This was the origin of Decoration Day, which we now call Memorial Day. The general went on to say, if other eyes grow dull and other hands slack and other hearts cold in this solemn trust, ours shall keep it well as long as the light and warmth of life remain to us. Let no vandalism or neglect, no ravages of time, testify to the present or the coming generations that we have forgotten as a people the cost of our freedom. Let us, then, at the time appointed, gather around their sacred remains and garland their graves with the choicest flowers of springtime. Let us raise above them the dear old flag they saved. Let us in this solemn presence renew our pledges to aid and assist those whom they have left among us. A sacred charge upon the nation's gratitude. 
This is a day to remember our honored dead, to keep alive their spirit, to show respect for all those who served, and to remember all the soldiers, sailors, marines, and airmen, and their families, their widows, and orphans. Thank you. I was in middle school or high school if I could stand up here and do that. You know, it's, I don't think it's easy. We are now going to have the names of the Darien men killed in the war, read by first selectman Jamie Stevenson. Uh, Raleigh Hollop will be doing the bell ringing down here, three rings, three chimes of the bell after each list shows respect for those who have gone for us. So Raleigh, you go down yep, right over there. And uh, Jamie, thank you. Good afternoon. From the Civil War, 1861 to 1865, Carl Ackerman, James H. Bates, Louis H. Benedict, Joseph Bushy, Nathan R. Bixby, Charles H. Clock, Horace Curtis, Philip Fortune, Michael Harmon, Frederick Henderson, William H. Howe, William H. Howman, Edward S. Hoyt, Isaac L. Hoyt, Elias Johnson, George D. Jordan, Frank LaRoche, Samuel McGlue, John Mallon, William H. Northrop, Gabriel W. Platt, John Price, Franklin H. Schofield, Albert O. Seeley, Silas F. Slauson, Thomas Smith, Jacob W. Vincent, Joseph Boyd, Isaac Weed, Raymond Weed, Adolf Werner, James A. Whaley, George W. Wilmot. From World War I, 1917 to 1918, David C. Bispham, Lawrence F. Callahan, <laughs> Martin H. Gill, Wilfred T. Lowndes, Murtag C. McDonald, Edward G. Punzelt, Ernest F. Sexton, and George Straka. <coughs> World War II, 1941 to 1945. Sanford Adams, Eric Allen, William A. Acrig II, Elton S. Barrett, Orrin K. Boyce, James Butts, Joseph A. Chase, Peter T. Chester, Horace G. Cleveland III, Louis Cotling, David O. Devlin, Anthony R. Freight, Donald Frothingham Jr., Raymond L. Howe, Pascal G. Improta, Lawrence, Lawrence H. Isbell, Thomas W. Jenkins, Jefferson M. Johnson, John L. Masterson, George R. Miller, Alan R. Morehouse, Arthur L. Nielsen, William T. O'Neill, Jr., Francis W. O'Toole, 
Otis Overton, Rosario F. Palmberry, Harold D. Parody, Kenneth C. Phillips, John Pine, Louis E. Rayner, Thomas F. Rendler, David L. Rosenberg, Charles B. Rossi, Gordon S. Smith, Thomas F. Smith, Stephen J. Tansick, Torger D. Tokel, Julius W. Torek, Anthony Vitti, Clarence C. Walker, From the Korean War, 1950 to 1953, George R. Broadhurst, James A. Dooley, Jr., Eugene Murphy, Julius C. Nachi, Robert J. Perkinson. From the Vietnam War, 1958 to 1975, Alan L. Deirdrickson, John B. Geeson, Jr., James S. MacArthur, David I. Mixter, William R. Patience, Jr., and John B. Sherman. cemetery. It is in Durian, so we're connected to it that way. This is the 100th anniversary of the armistice, which had to be extended a couple of times until they got to the Treaty of Versailles. First armistice, the armistice was signed at the uh, campaign in France. Signed earlier in the morning, but it went into effect at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month later. But we do have a connection here to uh, people in World War I. There are many buried in this area right here and in the rest of the cemetery, who were people who came back from World War I and died later on, or died in World War I. For an example, buried in this cemetery is Edward Punzelt. He was one of the eight who was killed, who, who died during the World War I. Big Spanish flu epidemic back at that time. Six of the eight that passed away died from some sort of disease, which was pretty typical back in that day. But Edward Punzel is buried here. You go up beyond the pond up here, and when you start to make the bend, you look up, there's a mausoleum on the hillside. But in front of that, there's a stone to George Straka. George Straka was overseas, fought overseas, did well, but got sick, died from pneumonia overseas. But he's buried here. He was 23 when he passed away. The first killed in action soldier in World War I was Lieutenant Ernest Sexton. Lieutenant Ernest Sexton was a forward observer. Some of you who may have uh, served in war know what a forward observer does. He goes out in front of the lines, and he spots and sees what he sees out there and reports it back. On June 4th, 1918, Lieutenant Ernest Sexton was killed instantly when a shell landed on his position in the forward lines. Lieutenant Sexton is buried in St. Patrick's Cemetery in Waverly, Massachusetts. It's a family plot. There's also another man who was killed in an incident, and that was David Charles Bispham. David Charles Bispham had uh, relationships with uh, relatives in Europe, in England, and when the war started, he lived in Darien. His father was a very famous opera singer at the time. The young man went over and enlisted in the Royal Flying Corps. The Royal Flying Car was the Corps was the precursor to the Royal Air Force. And he was killed in a training accident over there, and he is buried in London. 
We will now have America the Beautiful sung by the Darien High School Tutor Singers. speaker today is Gold Star Mother Patricia D. Parry, whose son Navy SEAL Chief Brian Robert Bill was killed on August 6, 2011 when his helicopter was shot down in Afghanistan. Brian was the youngest of three children of Pat and her marriage to Scott Bill. Pat, a Stanford native, is a nurse, lived in Massachusetts for a while and worked in Boston City Hospital before returning to Connecticut in 1976 to work at St. Joseph's Hospital. She's on many boards in Stanford, where she and her husband, Dr. Michael Perry, also work towards raising funds for scholarships in Brian's name at Norwich University and Trinity Catholic High School. She's instrumental in the organization's LZ for Vets and the Veterans Park Partnership in Stanford. Pat is the first Gold Star Mother we have ever had as our speaker, and we are extremely honored to have her here today. Please welcome Pat Perry. Thank you. To all of the uh, dignified people here, wonderful people, for inviting me, thank you. For all of uh, Monsignor Sewillo, veterans, members of the military that may be here, any Gold Star families or Blue Star families, and Grand Marshal Robert Mitchell. Brian is one of the many men and women who gave their lives in service to our country, and as you heard, that's what Memorial Day is about. It is to honor and remember the sacrifices of our men and women who gave their lives in service to our great, great country. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. 
at the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Brian really spoke about what he did and his word that he used was work. If I ever asked him what he was doing, he said, I'm going to work. That was it. But every so often, you get a little glimpse into his world. In 2006, Brian called from overseas to tell us that his best friend, Mark Lee, had been killed in Iraq. He was headed home from his deployment to be at Mark's funeral and support his family. And that is the message I have for all of you. Family is what gives life meaning and richness. I've been blessed with an amazing husband and a supportive family. I have six siblings, their spouses, a brother-in-law and sister-in-law. Of course, we had children. Brian had brothers, sisters, and cousins, and we all mourned his loss. When a soldier, sailor, marine, or airman serves, so does his family. When a soldier, sailor, marine, or airman dies, their family suffers the tragedy. We honor and remember them by telling their stories. One such man, and I'm going to divert for just one minute, ask my husband to please stand up with a flag that we carried in the parade. One man, George Lutz, set out to find some symbolism to honor and remember his son and the men and women who were killed. In 2005, his son, George Lutz Jr., Colonel George Lutz Jr., had been killed in Iraq. This is when the honor member flag was conceived, and I'd like to tell you about the significance. The red field represents the blood spilled by brave men and women in America's military throughout our history, who willingly gave their lives so that we could remain free. The blue star represents active service in military conflict. This symbol originated with World War I, but on this flag it signifies service through all generations from the American Revolution to present day. The white border beneath and surrounding the gold star recognizes the purity of sacrifice. There is no greater price an American can pay than to give his or her life in service to our country. The gold star signifies the ultimate sacrifice of a warrior in active service who will not return home. Gold reflects the value of the life that was given. The folded flag signifies the final tribute to an individual that a family sacrificed and gave to the nation. The flame is an eternal reminder of the spirit that has departed this life, yet burns on in memory of all who knew and loved the fallen hero. Thank you. I uh, made a few changes this morning. I, had, um, I was very moved when I read something this morning written by Jocko Willink, who is a former Navy SEAL. So I wanted to close with a few of these words. I am the fallen soldier, sailor, airman, and marine. Remember me. I am the one that held the line. Sometimes I volunteered. Sometimes I went because I was told to go. But when the nation called, I answered. In order to serve, I left behind the family, friends, and freedom that so many take for granted. Over time, I used different weapons a sword, a musket, a bayonet, a rifle, a machine gun. Often I marched into battle on foot, countless miles across whole continents. I had little water and even less food, but it did not matter. We had a job to do. Other times I rode to battle on horseback or in wagons, sometimes on trains, later in tanks or jeeps or Humvees. In early wars, my ships were made of wood and powered by the wind. Later, they were made of steel and powered by diesel fuel, or the atom. I even took to the air and mastered the sky in planes, helicopters, and jets. The machines of war evolved and changed with the time, but remember that it was always me, the warrior, that had to fight our nation's enemies. But also remember, I was not only a warrior. I was not just a soldier, sailor, airman, or marine. Remember also that I was a son, a brother, a father. I was a daughter, a sister, a mother. I was a person like you, a real person with hopes and dreams for the future. This Memorial Day, remember me, the fallen warrior. 
And remember me not for my sake, but for yours. Remember what I sacrifice so you can truly appreciate the incredible treasures you have. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. You have the joys of life, the joys that I gave up so that you can relish in them. A cool wind in the air, the gentle spring grass on your bare feet, the warm summer sun on your face, family, friends, and freedom. Never forget where it all came from. It came from sacrifice, the supreme sacrifice. Don't waste it. Don't waste any of your time on this earth. Live a life that honors the sacrifice of our fallen heroes. Remember them always and make every day Memorial Day. Thank you so much, Pat. I had the occasion on the, uh, at Brian's funeral to command the color guard over in Stanford for the Patriot Guard Riders. When we did that, we came down here, we had about 250 members down here. You know, when you lose somebody in this country, you lose them in your heart, no matter whether you're a soldier in their unit, no matter what, they're part of you. Because no man is an island, we are all part of the main. And it tore us up. But God bless all the men and women that are in uniform today and have been in uniform forever. We're now present, presenting the memorial wreaths. I'd like uh, First Selectman Stevenson and the Speaker and the Grand Marshal to make their way down to the two wreaths. Okay, I'd like uh, Raleigh Commissioner Hollop and uh, also Commissioner uh, Gaffney to uh, help out to place the wreaths in front of the monument.